Good morning, Arizona. Eric Holscher here, Tempe, Arizona, local gardener. Decided I'd start making some YouTube videos on how to garden in Arizona and what you like to garden. And if you know anything about Arizona, above anything else, it's very hot in the summertime. <laughs> Matter of fact, there's some people that travel to Arizona in the summer and I kind of wonder, Okay, if it's if it's not for work, what are you doing? It's too stinking hot. But anyways, I digress. I just wanted to share some of uh, the things that have worked for me here in my garden in Arizona. Now, I just want to point out to you guys, I've got quite a few tomato plants growing in my garden. And I've got uh, a nice jalapeno pepper tree there with some beans down here and some squash over here. I've got some cucumbers growing as well. And I just planted my carrots and some onions today. <clears throat> now, some may ask, well, why are you doing it on November 4th? Don't you know winter's right around the corner? And to that I would say, yeah, you're exactly right. It is right around the corner. <coughs> God bless me. And I'm actually going to build a greenhouse around my garden. One of the first things I wanted to share with you guys though is when you're gardening, this is my third year gardening in the ground. Now this right here, this soil, this ground used to look just like this, nothing but crabgrass. I actually took the crabgrass up with a hoe and a rake and then I transformed it into this. It was very tough the first year gardening because of the heat. I really didn't know what to do. I just prepared the soil, I planted my seeds and seed trays, transplanted uh, the, all the plants into the soil and I noticed like wow, a lot of my plants are wilting over what's going on here some of them are dying well come to find out i didn't have a good healthy balance of nutrition in my soil and they had transplant shock even though i transplanted them out of the seed containers in about the middle of march it was a little warm so you typically want to prepare your soil if you got a yard like this you want to take this and transform it into this it takes a lot of work huge undertaking but it can be done one thing I'm going to tell you right now amongst many as I make these videos is do not give up on gardening in Arizona because it can be done. It can definitely be done. If you see anything pop up on my screen it's because of my Samsung phone and I don't know what, you know, it, sometimes it just it shuts off and turns back on by itself. It's really weird. I don't know why it does that and I've talked to, to my carrier about that and they don't know why. Anyways, let's get back to gardening. but. So, you know, um, real quick with the tomatoes, you can see these have got yellow flowers on them. Those have got yellow flowers on them down there. You can see clusters of tomatoes there. You can see clusters down there, clusters right over here, and there's more clusters right there. Right now, this soil has got a very healthy balance of nitrogen, potassium, magnesium. I've got a lot of mycorrhizae in my soil, so I've got real healthy soil. I've also got the wood chips down here. That's another key for Arizona. Because Arizona is a desert climate, it's hot and dry. You want to use wood chips to maintain the moisture in the soil for your plants. Uh, one of the other things that you want to do once you get you know, your soil prepared, actually before you get it prepared, you want to look for good key placement for your garden. Where's the sun at? How long is it up? Because if you've noticed when you go buy plants in a nursery on the tag it'll say full sun, eight hours. Well, full sun eight hours in Arizona is a lot different than, you know, the central plains, the upper Midwest, the northeast, or the southeast, just because it's a dry desert climate. The UV rays are really intense here for quite a bit of uh, the days of the year and months. So you got to be careful with all that. So find a good placement. <clears throat> you don't have to do an in-ground garden. You can do an above-ground garden, like this little garden box here. I use cardboard underneath it. This is my own compost material that I use. I've got my compost pile over here. I mix it up with uh, lawn clippings, mulberry leaf trees, and then I buy uh, some really good compost mulch manure from Dan's Eyes and Dairy Farm out in Levine. Really good group of men and women out there. Good local uh, family. They give back to the community. They do a lot for Arizona and their milk is amazing. Anyhow, I only say this because I had purchased some soil from them. I had talked to their operations manager and I asked him, what kind of system do you use to prep your soil? He gave me the rundown and I'm like, wow, what's your pH? 
7.4 pH in your soil. And I've, I've been doing, you know, business with uh, Dan Zeisen, buying their milk and all their local goods that they sell. And, you know, I was really impressed with the quality and care they put into everything. And that was the reason why I bought their compost mulch manure. But I mixed that in with my own compost and it does a great job. So you want to have that as well. You want to have good composted soil that you can put back into the native soil to really increase it. Uh, the health the health of the soil. One of the other things I want you guys to know here in Tempe we live in an area where a lot of the homes are irrigated and this yard out here is an irrigated yard we've got a lot of earthworms. You could dig into the soil right now and dig up worms. I've got worms in my garden so one of the other benefits that I've got is I've got earthworm castings in here. Some people said, oh man, you went to Home Depot, or not Home Depot, you went to Walmart or a bait store and you bought all those rooms. Uh, no, I didn't. This home was built in 1953. This soil here is really rich soil uh, in a few key areas uh, just because of all the leaf material in my yard that is decomposed in my yard at one time. And so all these mulberry trees would just lay in the grass, they would emulsify into the soil or decompose and emulsify and the soil would just get black over time. And so now you dig down, you know, eight inches to a foot uh, and you've got good soil, black soil. You go down maybe like a foot and a half and it's clay. But so, you know, first thing, good placement of where you want the garden. Number two, nutrition in the garden. You wanna get three, the wood chips. Number four is watering. I water twice a month in the fall time and once in the winter months just because it's not as hot out and once I got my greenhouse I'm able to trap more of the moisture inside now so that's what you want to do but in the summertime I water at least three times a week and you got to stay consistent on your watering the wood chips that was an idea Paul Gachi following him on YouTube I'm like you know I'm gonna use that in Arizona it only makes sense right it's gonna help the the moisture stay longer in the, in the soil and then the other thing you want to do in Arizona really is get some chicken wire. I've got desert thrasher birds. We've got, I don't know, maybe seven or eight pairs of foxes that live around ASU. I'm not too far from ASU, so I see the foxes in my yard at least a nightly basis. They get in here, they start digging it up, they'll lay in here in the summertime to keep cool, they'll snack on the tomatoes, and then the desert thrasher birds, they're really a blessing and a cursing. They're a blessing because they eat a lot of like the green horn worms and the nasty like uh, box elder bugs we get. But the other problem is they, they'll tear up the soil getting through the wood chips to chase the sow bugs or the pill bugs or the, the uh, earwigs or crickets or centipedes or millipedes. And so sometimes if you've got seedlings in here, they'll just knock them over as they're thrashing through the soil and they'll kill them. So I'll let this uh, stay on here until I get my greenhouse built up. Usually in the spring and summer months, I'll keep it on for a month and a half to two months until the plants get all about this big and then I'll take it all off and then I'm good to go. So that's another thing you want to do. Um, I know there's quite a few different gardeners out here. Everybody has their own ideas. Mine has just been an adaptation over time and what I've learned. But going back to the first few minutes of the video here for the first minute, don't give up on gardening. You can garden in Arizona. You just got to keep at it keep consistent and you'll do real well. I'm going to go over here to my jalapeno tree here and if you if you look here I'm going to scroll in you can see those beautiful jalapenos. I've got almost three dozen on this jalapeno uh, tree and I had actually dried it out for a week and then watered it, dried it out, watered it and increased the Schofield units in the heat in here and so I've got some pretty healthy and hot jalapenos. So this tree was planted, or this was planted from a seed, like I said, back in February, and it's doing real well. My garden gets a lot of honeybees, leaf cutter bees. I get different species of bees in here, and that's just because we're entering a grand solar minimum, and the UV spectrums are a little bit different, and because of uh, the decreased magnetosphere and the cosmic rays that are coming in from the sun, um, you get different light spectrums because the magnetosphere isn't as strong and because it's weakened. These are all just cycles that, that we go through in the weather. I don't want you to be alarmed. This isn't a global warming or climate change thing. All of that is really a hoax. I've, I've studied meteorology 
since 1992. I was one of the four, first storm chasers out in Kansas before it even became popular back in 1992. Uh, that's pretty popular today, but just giving you a little bit of info, I know the weather pretty well. And I know, you know, right now for the next two weeks, I'm not going to need a greenhouse on my garden yet because the temperatures for highs are going to be in the mid to upper 80s and lows in the 60s to mid 50s at night. And then after about two weeks from now, 12 to 14 days from now, the temps are going to drop down again, even though you can't really forecast a week or two weeks ahead because the weather changes daily. But I'm just kind of going with that, uh, you know, just kind of basing the garden off that. And we'll see how consistent it is. If the weather changes, I'll change and adapt to the weather. Nothing you can do. But let's not worry about global warming or climate change. That's just all political garbage. Weather is cyclical. It's historically cyclical. You can find it. If you dig deep, today they're burying a lot of good information because they don't want you younger, younger generations to figure out what's going on. But you guys, I'm going to tell you right now. I'm not going to tell you to trust me, but I do know what I'm talking about when it comes to weather. Anyways, uh, getting back to the gardening here because the weather does affect the gardening. Arizona is in a really good spot for growing stuff. We've got two growing seasons. The first one starts about mid to the latter part of February after we get like a hard frost or a freeze. And then you can plant your seeds in the soil. And then the last growing season is typically right at September you want to get them in the ground. Now you can, you can plant them in seed trays. One of the issues with the seed trays is that you're going to get some transplant shock. So be prepared for that. Um, you can plant them in the soil. All these are seedlings that have sprung from seeds to actual plants. And what's neat is they're doing well. Now there are a few in here that I did buy from uh, a, a nursery over in Chandler. But, um, and they're doing well as well. But I want to point out to you right here, that tomato, that was a, that was a volunteer. That one was a volunteer. I had accidentally raked in uh, a tomato, a little cherry tomato, and that was only probably about three inches tall about two and a half weeks ago. Now it's almost 10 inches tall, so it's doing really good. But I've got some black crimin here, some Missouri pink love tomatoes. I've got some indigo purples I'm growing. I've got some early girls, better boys, beefsteaks. Um, I got some lychee tomatoes, some tigrella tomatoes. I've got a variety growing. I really love tomatoes. Most people do. Uh, but I've got some beans down here and some squash that are growing. You can see my beans over there. They're doing quite well. So, you know, again, guys, uh, if you're gardening here in Arizona, do not give up. Just keep at it. You know, get a good spot picked out in your yard first. Then prepare the soil. You can do an in-ground garden like me. You can do an above-ground garden. You can do like a garden box like I got over there. I built those myself. It only cost me probably like eight bucks to build those. Um, but uh, you can do it. It's it's pretty simple. I, I personally think if you're, you're an older person, like in your like, or if you got knee problems and you can't bend over or hip problems, get an above ground garden box like that. Three feet tall. You don't have to really bend over at all. It's easy to work those. So yeah, for anybody that says, well, I'm old, I can't do it. No, you can. Find somebody like a good Samaritan that'll help you out with that. Um, you know, or leave a comment or a questions for me at the uh, the video, uh, and I'll I'll help you answer those. But again, good placement of your garden, good sun, good shade. Make sure your soil's got good nutrition in it. Make sure you're planting what you want to plant, and then water consistently. And if you go away for a vacation or somewhere out of town to visit family or business, make sure you got somebody you can trust that can water your garden consistently because. If they don't, you'll come back and your garden will not be very healthy. And all that work you put into it, well, <laughs> it'll be very difficult for it to recover. <laughs> this video is my first, one of my first videos I'm making on gardening. So pardon me if you hear some sniffles or a uh or a uh or anything like that. This is an unedited video. I like doing it like that or making videos unedited because for me it's just, you're getting the real deal unedited uh, you know gardening so it only gets better as you do this more and more and you go along with it but just wanted to show you my guys or not I'm not, not my guys that's the name of my pest control company my my bug guy but I just wanted to show you guys gardening in Arizona what it looks like and how you can do it so if you have any questions or comments please leave them down below I will try my best to answer them I uh, I do run a small pest control company so 
If I don't get to it right away, I will do my best to answer any questions or any comments that you guys leave. Uh, you can feel free to, you know, ask me different questions. Just be thoughtful in what you're going to say or what you're thinking when you're typing it down. Um, I don't mind if you're critical. That's fine. You know, everybody's entitled to their own opinion. This is still pretty much a free country for the most part um, in wanting to say what you want to say. But really, this channel is all about gardening in Arizona and helping people become better gardeners um, and how you can help your community out, your neighbors around you, getting them to garden. You know, I get a lot out of my garden, and I actually just give it away to my neighbors, and they love it. And then some of my neighbors have chicken coops. They, they bring me eggs for free. And it's like, wow, this is really cool. You know, or I'll do a, a bee job where I go out and I'll smoke the bees, get some honeycomb, uh, relocate the bees from time to time, and I'll get some honey and I give it to my neighbors, you know. Uh, so, you know, just giving back to your own, you know, community, you know. And I just thank the good Lord above that I'm able to do this. And, you know, I appreciate all you out there that are gardening. You know, thanks, Luke, over at MI Gardener. You've been a... A true uh, blessing and help. Paul Gachi, you know, uh, your brother in Christ, I really appreciate all the help you've given me too. And, you know, uh, James Picronelli, I don't know if that's the right way I'm pronouncing it. Forgive me if I'm butchering your name, but he's up in Jersey. He's another great guy that's given me a lot of good info. And there's a few other guys and gals out there I've followed. And I've just taken some of their ideas and I put it into playing my own garden. And it's doing well. I'm going to expand this garden. One last thing over to where that pumpkin's decomposing right now. I'm going to expand it out. Get me some sweet corn going and some other things. Just got my carrots planted along with some um, onions in my little uh, side garden right there. So, hey guys, y'all have a blessed day. Any questions, comments, leave them below. And uh, I'll talk to you soon. Bye.